Welcome back guys to episode 6 with Fly Time with me, Telis Katsugianos. And today we're gonna do a little bit more saltwater flies. Um, main focus is of course the tropical saltwater fishing with these two, two flies. Uh, but of course they work for more or less any predator. If you hunt for predators, anything from big pike or perch, trout, it doesn't matter. These flies will of course work for that type of, uh, all those types of fishes. But uh, these patterns uh, has shown themselves to be very very effective those times I've been in Mexico. I caught my first permit with this uh, rubber shrimp that we're gonna tie. I uh, also caught a personal best on Jack Crevel and a lot of bonefish. So these two flies are very simple to tie and really really uh, effective flies. So let's get started. Start by taking a partridge attitude hook. I really like this hook and these types of hook for uh, bait fish flies and we will use this for the shrimp fly as well. It's a very very good hook. Uh, white thread and I'm attaching that very close to the eye and we're not gonna tie very much on this fly actually. It's pretty, it's very fast and simple yet very effective bait fish imitation. Uh, and the base will be something called slinky hair. Any other uh, like fish fiber kind of uh, or epi fiber will do the job of course. You can either cut it off up here and then use both like mm, it's enough for two wings or you cut exactly what you need. Uh, Pros and cons with every choice you make, of course. Uh, when I'm tying this, I'm doing it like the salmon flies, uh, which means in reverse. Um, this wing is, as you can see, now pointing forward. And I'm making sure that it's more or less around the whole hook. Uh, I'm making these laps here, and then I'm folding that backwards and attaching it on the same point as I first did. All right, that's the base. And now we're using baitfish flash in chartreuse or chartreux. Uh, and I'm pulling this out. You can pull or cut or doesn't really matter. This one I also want to be somewhat around the whole fly. Not necessarily underneath but I want it to be spread pre pretty good over the body of the, the fly. If it's just like a slim top wing, it won't really do give me the effect that I want. And the last we're gonna tie in is now the peacock. This one is gonna be a little bit more just on top as a darker back of the, uh, of the fish. So, and I'm Putting that, as you can see, a little bit more on top. A few laps here. And then fold that one over. Attach it to make sure you get everything back. As you can see, this tying technique uh, gives you a 100% clean eye here. There's nothing that you need to cut uh, or clean here, at least. We're, of course, going to do some cutting of the, the actual fly. But this is the amount of fly tying we actually do on this fly. So I'm putting glue on the thread and finishing by wrapping a few laps and then cut. Cut that off and pinch it in. What you can do now is take your brush and just like comb through here. Any loose materials will get get lost and you will get those a little bit joined together. Now I'm taking my scissor and a good tip here is to use a scissor with a long blade because you want to cut as flat as possible or horizontal as possible. Like so. Because as you can see, it's just a few cuts and you're done. But if you're using a short scissor, you need to cut way more or you have to be a little bit more careful not coming in like this with the scissor because then you will lose all that taper 
you don't want a bad taper on this. You should go with nice good filling in the middle of the fly or around the head and then slowly goes thinner and thinner out towards the tail. Okay, that's that and I'm gonna now put epoxy eyes on. Uh, gold color or silver, you it's a good choice, both of them. Uh, there you go, one. This has like, it is like a small sticker, so it gives you the possibility to uh, place them in a good position, but before you put your epoxy or UV glue on, uh, it can be good to add a little bit of the quick glue here, the Loctite. So, and then pinch those in a little bit. It's good to let that dry a little bit before we uh, proceed by adding the UV glue. While that is happening, I'm cutting a little bit with the fly. Uh, it's very easy to overdo this. So, a good tip can be when you're somewhat satisfied with the taper of the fly, don't cut more. Go away, leave the fly alone for a while and then uh, look at it again. Uh, you might see that you're pretty satisfied or you might need to cut more. But if you cut too much in the beginning it's pretty hard to add material to it as, as you can understand. Okay, now we'll just take that UV glue. Of course clear. Oh, you see I'm gonna cut a little bit more here. There we go. Uh, the UV glue. Here we go. The good thing about this is that you can, you have a lot of time. You can just put that on. This will not cure or harden until you use that UV pen or UV light of yours. Keep adding here to cover a little bit in nice shape shape a nice skull because you want the f uh, fly to have more mass around the head and belly area and that strand there was a little bit annoying but fold that around something like that and then you take the pen and make sure this cures properly by gluing on and Let's see, to try to get that away. Put it in like that. Good thing to know about UV glue and UV pens, sometimes you might uh, find that it's hard to get the glue to really cure and really harden that's not necessarily that the glue is bad it might be the pen uh, if it's uh, doesn't have the uh, the right frequency so you can actually try to just uh, change pen and you will get a way better result there is of course more uh, ways to do this uh, if you add a little bit more of this, you are good to go and go out fishing, but the, the eyes are not uh, protected, it's easy to break it. Another one that's uh, very common is epoxy glue, which you mix together, but you uh, need to have uh, your eye on the fly a little bit. You need to be rotating it, otherwise it will just start dripping and falling down. But it's very strong. A third option is to use heating glue or melting glue, which you just melt with your lighter and create a nice skull as well. Uh, negative thing with that is uh, it won't go very well in uh, tropical fishing because this will melt in your fly box. But it's good for Scandinavian conditions uh, where we have a little bit more cold. Uh, if you're interested to see how I use this, uh, you have a bait fish that I'm tying about seven years ago here on YouTube on my channel. And you can find that uh, technique on that fly. So I will not sh show it again. Okay, that's the bait fish. And now we're going to proceed with the shrimp fly. For this 
shrimp, uh, Mexico shrimp or saltwater shrimp, we're using the same hook. Uh, size 6, attitude, partridge, a very good hook. And I've changed the thread to a green one, which you will understand why very soon. I'm attaching the thread here. And I'm doing a few layers here, because if it is too little thread, or too little uh, layers, this might start spin on the hook, which we don't want. Uh, next step is adding the lead eyes. And you can use different kind of models. This You don't need to use the heavier one than this one, for example. It depends on situation when you're fishing. If it's uh, deeper or if the water is a little bit rough with wind and waves, you might need this heavier one. If you're fishing very calm, uh, flats, uh, shallow, nice, low wind, you can use less weight than this. Because we want this to stand on the bottom and when the bonefish or permit or whatever you're fishing is getting close to the fly, you start retrieving it, it will swim up or rise from the bottom. By adding the weight on this side, it will always sink with the hook up, so you will not get stuck to the bottom. Now I am going all the way back. You can add a little bit of glue here. It will of course secure it. And normal, normally, or most times, the natural bend of the hook is in alignment with the uh, needle, the, the eye here, the point. But as you can see here, it's not. So I'll go a little bit further back, which means I need to be a little bit careful. Now I am in a good position just before the hook starts to bend off there. Uh, I'm using, as a tail, I'm using Crystal Flash in color pearl. And I don't need that much. And I'm cutting that off. Like so. I'm taking a little bit off. That was a little bit too much. As with a lot of materials, when I'm attaching them, uh, I attach that much that I can create, as you can see, an even surface here. I'm not attaching and cutting. I'm wrapping that all the way down along the shank on the hook, because I want that to be very even underneath. And I'm also adding more thread to make sure it's e nice and even, and also to create uh, a green body. You will see what I'm gonna do very soon. I just need to go a little bit further back here. Make sure that's nice and tight. Now I'm gonna adjust here by cutting a little bit. Make sure that those strands are not identical in length. It's good if they are a little bit uneven. Looks better in the water and moves better in the water as well. Now I'm taking something that's called vinyl rib, which is a silicone based uh, ribbing. And this is gonna be our body. This is both very, very cool effect in it, and it's also very strong. So the fly has a very good durability, thanks to this. And I'm attaching that one on the underside here. And as you can see, I'm doing it the same thing as last attachment of material. I'm wrapping it all the way down, creating a very nice even surface. And I'm covering everything here with thread, because I want this green to glow through because this is transparent and the other ones uh, there is a lot of colors in this as well they are also see somewhat see-through so you can get a very cool effect by choosing uh, colorful material underneath or a flash or pearl or whatever you want to use that will glow through very nicely all right now we're ready to do this make sure every Every wrap here is nice and tight and on the edge of each other. So you, be careful so you don't go forward too much because you don't want anything to peek out here. And this is just pretty strong material so you can do this pretty tight. Pull pretty hard. So and I'm coming up on the upside here and then attaching it. 
This is a little bit slippery material, so make sure you make a few extra wraps with thread before you cut it. Okay, now we're almost done with this. We're gonna use a little bit of sonker here now, and this is, uh, we're not gonna use the strip, we're just gonna use this fur, because rabbit sonker is very nice, soft material, it gives good movement in the water. So I'm gonna take some out here, and I'm just gonna cut the fibers off the skin here. Like so. Taking a little bit off. Like the salmon flies and the bait fish I just tied, these kind of materials I always tie reversed, which means tie it forward, attach it, and bend it backwards like this and attach it. Good thing about this is you're creating a very strong fly and you're making sure that this is pretty clean here. Now we're gonna add uh, rubber legs, or to be extremely uh, detailed, it's silly legs. Uh, a little bit flat, with two colors, a very nice, good looking rubber legs. And I'm taking two, because I want to have four in total. And I'm, when I'm attaching this, I am taking the legs like so. Because I want to have a little bit of the clear and a little bit of the orange. So I'm just two loose wraps here. Then I can adjust by carefully pulling a little bit. Making sure that it's one leg on each side. I'm satisfied there. Then I tighten it and cutting that off. Then I will take the second rubber leg here and do the same. Maybe I want to have a little bit more orange, which means I'm making it a little bit shorter already. And then you can, of course, cut afterwards. It's a good thing to make the legs a little bit extra long and because it's always easier to cut afterwards than to add something which is impossible. And this kind of material, rubber legs and silicone materials are very soft. So it's very easy to tie them down and create a good nice looking head here glue on the thread few laps and then cut it off as you can see how nicely that green glows through that clear uh, vinyl rib all right that's the Mexico shrimp, my favorite fl uh, fly for flats fishing in Mexico. Uh, we, as a joke, we call it the Mahomal shrimp. There might be a pattern that has that name already, so if that's the case, please let me know. It doesn't have really a name. As you can see, I cut, cut the legs a little bit, and it will stand like this on the bottom. And when you pull this home or when you start retrieving this will rise nicely from the bottom and then when you pause it will sink down and stand like this again very good for uh, tropical fishing but will definitely work for uh, all kinds of predators or shrimp and crab eaters that was this episode i hope you find it uh, amusing and fun and that you got inspired to do some saltwater flies